Welcome. Today we're answering subscribers questions. And the title of this video is Cinema 4D and Redshift PC Build Specs. We're going to read the conversation. We're going to go through the specs. We're going to itemize and see if we can uh, find a couple of solutions. One with what he has and two with what he uh, what we think he needs, what we would recommend the build situation should be. And because of the situation right now, it was a problem getting your hands on a GPU. Well, right now it's kind of getting to be a problem getting your hands on the right CPU. Let's check those specs and let's read the conversation first. And this comment is on the video MSI Meg Godlike X570 with RTX 3090s and the MSI M.2 Expander Arrow. And this comment is from Agesna Joden. Hey Gil, I don't really understand that much about computer components, but I really need to upgrade my PC for large render, which can need more video RAM. I just want to ask if this is a good way to upgrade my PC or not. The RX 5950, the Meg X570 Godlike, two RTX 3090s with SLI. Is there any benefit gain if I change my motherboard and add another RTX 3090? Okay, so right now we know the motherboard you've got, we know the processor you've got, which is 16 cores. We're going to go through all that. And you're talking about one, two, three RTX 3090s. More information. My first question, I said, welcome, that depends. What are you rendering with? Because at this point, I don't know what you know. Right now, would you be better off with one GPU like an RTX A series? However, if your rendering software can address more GPUs, which it can, how many can it use? Well, Redshift can use up to eight. Hold that thought. We'll need to find out. I'll be happy to check that once you share that inform information. And the response, my current project have many more polygon, which maxed out the video RAM on an RTX 3090. He's running Cinema 4D and Redshift as the render and outputting 8K frame for panoramic website. It took about eight minutes just to gather all the resources at the beginning before rendering, since I already got one RTX 3090. Okay. That's one change. So far, you've only got one RTX 3090, but you're talking about one, two, possibly three. And it's about the render, which means you need more video RAM. Got that. And we don't want to optimize the machine for just one application. We want to build a balanced machine, purpose built. Let's keep going. Or should I build a new one? Well, my suggestion is we're going to go two options. But let's see what I have. I'm working on a video response to discuss your options. Stay tuned. And he said, well, do. Thank you so much. Okay, now we've read the conversations. What we need to do is outline and define the problem and the solution. The problem is, number one, the render. Now, based on the specs for the applications, which we still need to go through, we also need to look at the specs for the hardware that you have currently. Because there is an upgrade path to what you have, but I don't think, based on what you're telling me you're doing right now, that's going to get you to where you need to go. I'll just say right off, you do not have enough PCI Express resources. So before we get into your hardware specs, let's take a look at the application specs, which is kind of where you're at right now and where we want to show how we want to go beyond that to be able to get to where you're trying to think what my perception of to finish this project. Because hopefully this is not a one-time project, but as you're doing this project now, you're going to be doing more of these kind of projects in the future. Let's check those application specs. First thing we'll take a look is at Maxon Cinema 4D requirements, which are pretty meager. We're going to need the Windows operating system, Windows 10 64-bit, the version, and a 64-bit processor, which stands to reason, and recommended 16 gigs of RAM. And then for the GPU, again, pretty meager. Minimum of an NVIDIA Maxwell GPU, a GeForce 900 or higher, or an AMD Polaris. Need to be able to support DirectX 12, minimum GPU driver from NVIDIA, 461. Well, based on what we're trying to achieve, number one, it has to be NVIDIA. And uh, number two, you need an RTX something. And although Cinema 4D supports all DirectX 12 feature level 11 or Meta GPU Family 1 version 3 capable graphics cards, we recommend using a dedicated GPU. Absolutely. And you can go and read the specs. I'll have all these links in the description. Let's go now and check the application for the rendering. And this is where it's going to get a little bit more, uh, hopefully a little bit, little bit more explicit. Again, Windows 10, 64-bit, 3D application support. And you're using Cinema 4D, Windows 64-bit edition. Minimum requirements, recommended requirements. Okay, this is where we're going to 
take issue with recommended requirements based on what you're achieving right now. 16 gigs of RAM or more. My first solution would be if you're running 16 gigs, you need 32. And if you've got 32, that may be the largest model that you're going to use. However, as we build a balanced machine for what you're doing, I would recommend 64 gigs of RAM. So that's one recommendation which we hadn't touched on yet, but I need to think about. Because I still look at a balanced machine as the formula from Adobe After Effects for multi-frame rendering CPU optimization, which is, number one, the CPU cores times four equals the amount of RAM. So with the processor, you got 16 gigs of RAM, 16 times 4. That's where I get to that amount of RAM. And for your uh, balance of your CPU to your GPU, even though this application, Redshift, I'll show you another document, will recommend and uh, recognize up to 8 GPUs if you got the hardware for it. For a balanced machine, right now if you've got, let's say, well, let's go get into the GPUs, see what you've got. Okay, the specs on an RTX 3090 is 24 gigs. That's one consideration. Another consideration is the slot width and the power supply requirements. So right now, if we go with the standard of a three slot wide, which is could be two slot wide, or it could be three and a half slots wide. I don't know, you didn't tell me which one you're using. And also the power supply requirements. My concern, right now you're at 350 watts per GPU. So based on your current motherboard you have, which I'll get to the specs of that, uh, based on the number of slots you're going to need, because right now you're talking three GPUs, you have one, you're looking at a second and a third one. We're going to run out of PCI Express resources. That's a big deal. But furthermore, for three GPUs, where we're at right now on GPUs at 350 watts, we go from 350 watts to 700 watts to 1,050 watts. So you're going to need, if you go that route, my say would be about 1,200 watts on the power supply. And if you're looking at one of the new, or you wait for one of the new RTX 4000 series, you're looking at an easy 1500 watt power supply. Something to consider. So the question is, do you stick with an RTX 3090? Or because of what you're trying to achieve, because the results you're getting right now, I'm only trying to address the first problem. The second problem is completely separate, but i got to show you how we get there from what you have to what we think you need because of the resources that are required to do that with. It's a difference in shared PCI Express resources versus dedicated PCI Express resources. Doing the kind of work you're doing, you need dedicated resources. That's my opinion. If I were building. Let's get back to the specs. So you're going to need a bigger power supply. Let's take a look at your motherboard. I've taken the delivery of downloading the manual. We need to take a look at the specifications. We can look at the block diagram. In fact, what we might do is go ahead and check out the block diagram first, where we look like we have four slots. Three slots are on a switch, a PCI Express switch, and those three slots, because they're shared resources to the CPU, allows us also for one M.2, as you'll notice right here. So we have this that is direct. In other words, it's not shared, but it's through the platform controller hub, the chipset. And your other two M.2 drives that you can have are also there. So my expectation is you're going to need all three drives, M.2 drives, which is a third option we got to consider, which will get us probably to where we're going. So if you're getting the kind of results you have right now with an M.2, one M.2 for that loading of the data that takes eight minutes is not adequate. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing back to that, but I want to mention it while we're looking at the block diagram. A lot of motherboards don't have a block diagram, and they don't because they don't want you to know these facts. We're looking at a motherboard with shared resources, and I think that's a big deal that I wanted to point out. So we're still trying to identify problems as we identify solutions. Okay, we'll go back, and this time, let's see if we can look at the specifications. I want to go down to the slots, expansion slots. This does not give me enough information. Three slots that we know of, PCI Express underscore 1, 2, and 3. And with that processor, there are PCI Express 4.0. And of course, to reiterate, the other slot is through the chipset. The problem is, even though they're PCI Express by 16 mechanically, they're not PCI Express by 16 electrically. And I'll show you what I mean. Here's a good example. And we should be able to find further information to highlight this. Right here, third generation, 
AMD Ryzen supporting PCI Express 4.0. Here's the configuration for those three slots. By 16, by 0, by 0, or by 8, by 0, by 8. And that's electrically. You get a 16-lane slot, you don't use the other two. If you're going to use the other two, then you proceed to a by 8, by 0, and a by 8. Or if you use all three, the first one's in a by 8 electrically, and the other two are by 4 electrically. And the equivalent of by 4 electrically is kind of like thinking about uh, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt 3 would be four PCI Express lanes. You're using a 16-lane GPU, and you're putting it in an 8-lane slot, or you're putting it in a 4-lane slot. Now, if bandwidth becomes an issue, I don't think you're going to overtake and flood the bus, but you're doing some pretty big renders. So my suggestion, my preference, would be I want that GPU in a 16-lane slot. With one GPU like you have right now, you're good to go, but you see the kind of results you've got, and you've built that based on the specs. Now you want my recommendation of what I think. Okay, if you stick with the system you've got, with the motherboard you're using, and the processor you've got, we're still going to take a look at it because you've got 16 cores. Because you have shared PCI Express resources, this is the issue. You're talking one, two, three GPUs. As long as you're one GPU, you got 16 lanes for that one GPU. But because of resource allocation on this board, if you go to two GPUs, each one has eight lanes. So that's one way to solve that problem, but that's the other problem that comes up. My suggestion is a system and a motherboard and a processor that will support so that you're not worried about shared resources, but you have dedicated resources. So each one of those GPUs, of which there are three, all three of those, all three of those will get 16 lanes. There won't be any issues with bandwidth. There won't be any issues with overloading the bus, which I don't think you'd get anyway. But with dedicated resources, you're more likely to have success with what you're trying to do because this is a big project. And what you're doing now, what you're going to be doing later, is what's going to matter more. But we've got to make this work. Okay, let's go to the processor and see what we're working with. Now, for what it's worth, a Ryzen 5950 is at the top of the heap for the 5000 series, and there's going to be some new ones coming out, but that's 16 cores. Let's just look at the specs. 16 cores, your base clock is 3.4 gigahertz, your wattage is 105 watts, so not a big deal. 8 mega cache, and of course, 16 cores, 32 threads. And yeah, you can overclock it, but for the work you do, I wouldn't. So if you're at 3.4 gigahertz, you've got one direction where you've gone. Now, your motherboard, let me double check that. I believe your motherboard supports, yeah, dual channel. You've got four slots. You can go up to 128 gigs. So because of issues with memory and how that controller works, you're only going to want to use dual channel, which would be two slots out of the four. And those two slots, I would put 64 gigs of RAM. And I would try to target the DDR4-3200, but you're going to have to check around because this will support up to DDR4-4600 and check your prices. Sometimes you can get faster, but I would not go any slower than DDR4-3200. That's just my opinion. Now, right now you're using standard RAM. Even though this will support ECC, I wouldn't do it. But when we go to this next class, ECC becomes a very distinct possibility and a reality. Let's look again at your, uh, at your GPU. We're talking 24 gigs of RAM, so if you do that, if you do the math on that, we're talking 24, 48, 96. Interesting. Well, when you double that and then you triple that, you get an idea of what you're going to have for power supply. Let's take a look at another option, because you only have the one. What if we went with an RTX A6000? Let's check the specs on that. You will start at 48 gigs which would be two of those combined. But you'll be at 300 watts instead of having to have 350 plus 350, which is actually 700 watts. So more than likely, you can put the, this GPU in the machine you've got, and you've already doubled your power. Now, to me, that would make the most sense and the most bang for the buck. But we still haven't addressed the load time, and we can't with the machine you've got. And, of course, this is uh, the other advantage of this is this is a two-way excuse me, a two-slot, two-slot GPU. So those are the three primary things that I'm looking at on the GPU. So what you have to decide, and what I'm trying to show you is, 
if you stick with the motherboard and the processor you got for those two items, I would swap out that GPU for an RTX 3090. I would go for an RTX A6000 because maximizing the resources you've got. Okay, that's one thing we can address. But the other thing about the load time we can address because what you need, if you're using one M.2 NVMe drive that's PCI Express 4, and I expect right now you need all three. One for the load, which is the um, data you're doing, which would be the second drive. The primary drive would be the boot drive, the application drive. The third drive would be the render drive. Okay, the primary drive that you're concerned with, which would be the second drive, is the data drive. And if it takes eight minutes to load that data, let's say in round numbers, because PCI Express 4.0 has three generations, first, second, and third, which is a speed in megabytes of 5,000 megabytes, 7,000 megabytes, or 7,300 megabytes. So if we look in round numbers and say you've got a drive that's running at, say, 5,000 megabytes, and you're getting eight minutes on your load time, would you like to be able to cut that number in half, or would you like to be able to cut that in half again? In other words, instead of it taking eight minutes, what if it took four minutes? Or instead of taking four minutes, what if it, say, took in round numbers two to two and a half minutes? Would that be something that would interest you? Would that be an advantage? Okay, if it is to do that, then we've got to start over. And if we're still looking at a 16 core CPU, you need to jump over this and we need some better muscle to do the heavy, heavy lifting. You either got to have a high-end desktop or you've got to have a workstation. And based on what you're doing, where I think you may be headed, I think you're better off financially to look at a workstation. Use what you've got right now, put that RTX A6000 in it. Then later, when you decide you need to upgrade because you don't like that eight minutes of load time, new motherboard, new processor, still 16 cores, maybe the same RAM, it depends on the motherboard, because it'll still be DDR4, and with a workstation, you'll have dedicated resources. Instead of like a high-end desktop with two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots, generically, you would have six 16-lane slots. Dedicated resources, so all those slots, in other words, if you need three slots for GPUs, you got it. And if you need three slots so that each one of those slots can have a quad card. What's a quad card? We've done a whole lot of stuff about quad cards and bifurcation and uh, this other motherboard I'm going to show you will support it on a WRX80 workstation because that's what I think you need. And that would give you the other three slots that you could put in three quad cards. I would start with one quad card on the second drive, which again is your data drive, which is where your load time would go from eight minutes because of the speeds I've just quoted. And four drives in RAID, if you did a hybrid BIOS bootable RAID, or even if you did an operating system RAID, if that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 20,000 megabytes, what you'll get out of four drives in RAID would be the speed of three. 5, 10, 15. So instead of it taking a 5,000 megabyte drive that loads in 8 minutes, if you had a 15,000 megabyte drive that loaded in, uh, you see where I'm headed with that. So how far we want to go to find a solution to that problem to get you to where you need to be. Now I want to show you what we're talking about with the WRX80. Now the WRX80 is from AMD and what we have listed, even though it'll support up to 2 terabytes of RAM, of ECC RAM. Uh, realistically, what you're looking at is 512 gigs of RAM. But, it, but again, for what you need, you'll be fine with 64 gigs of RAM. But because you have space for it, and depending on the price of RAM, you might want to bump it up to 128, but that's your choice. We have built machines on a high-end desktop based on the X399, which was PCI Express 3, where we did 128 gigs of RAM. And then we went with a high-end desktop the next version, which was the Threadripper 3, that was on the TRX40, and we took that up to 256 gigs of RAM to max it out just to see what would happen. But to build the WRX80, when we get, if and when do we get to get the chance to do that, then I would look at 256 gigs of RAM realistically for the formula that I mentioned earlier in the beginning, based on also what you're doing right now, but as a balanced machine for processor, amount of RAM, the amount of PCI Express, resources. Even though this says we have more resources than we're going to need, when you start using everything that has to have a 16-lane slot of dedicated resources, they're there. The only thing we can reallocate are the resources on that slot 
and that involves a feature called bifurcation. What is bifurcation? The ability to bifurcate, the ability to split. The original term means to fork. So that takes, and remember, each M.2 drive requires four lanes, whether it's PCI Express 3, 4, or on down the line, 5, all of them, 6, it's coming out. Each one of them requires, on a device, four lanes, four PCI Express lanes. So when you bifurcate, you take a 16-lane slot, and you go 4, 4, 4, and 4. On some of these machines that can bifurcate, that are not a high-end desktop, but they're below that, like, like what you have, they may support bifurcation, but they will support partial bifurcation. What does partial bifurcation mean? That's the ability to take a 16-lane slot, and just like you're playing monkey business with the amount of slots you've got for the lanes you allocate, you're playing monkey business with those lanes where you might get 8, 4, and 4, but you won't get 4, 4, 4, and 4. They don't do a full bifurcation. It's, it's just it's the design. It's the way it is. That's why you need to think a little bit down the road, which is what I'm trying to help you to do. There's an upgrade path with what you have. It's limited. There's an upgrade path with what I'm suggested, but it also, too, has a finite point. But it has greater resources based on what you say you're doing for what you need because of the resources that you've built on based on the specs of that application. If you follow the specs of the application, you see the results you're getting. That's why I'm recommending, as I look down the road, what you're doing here, how it affects that. And that project is what we're trying to enhance. So if you stick with what you got to reiterate that, change the GPU to an RTX A6000, done. But if you want to increase the load time, you've got to have a quad card. And to have a quad card, you've got to have a system where you can fully bifurcate the slot so that each one of those M.2 drives gets four lanes. Four, 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 four. Simple. And then you put those four in a RAID. Now, because of the upgrade path, you could put in two more of those quad cards. Yeah, you can see where we're going with that. So the most important thing is your application data, um, which would be number two. But your most important drive is your data drive. So application drive, you could do the same thing to it that you're doing to the data drive. And you could do the same thing to the render drive. Now, I think your render drive will be okay on a regular M.2. And my suggestion would be to get a larger M.2 drive. Because when we're talking uh, this kind of uh, data, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think the largest we can get on PCI Express 4, third generation, are 2 terabyte drives. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And, of course, you'll lose the capacity to one of them. So you have the speed of 3, and you have to allow for the overhead. So these are just some things for some numbers to look at. Let's look at the processors and see what we've got. Now, you're using a 16-core processor, and I'm going to come back to these motherboards in just a second, because of these three, there's actually six, but only three we can, uh, we can say four, but only these three would be the ones I would consider right now, but that may change later. Now, based on the processor, we're looking at a Threadripper Pro, and only the Threadripper Pro works on the WRX80, and right now the Threadripper Pro is in the 3000 series processors. That, too, is supposed to be changing, but you'll have to wait till probably about March before those are going to upgrade. And what we want to look at are the three processors on top. There's actually one, two, three, four, and I believe a fifth one. Only Lenovo has that. And the 3945, that's mostly Lenovo. I wouldn't mess with it. Based on what you've got, you've got 16 cores. I would stick with what you have and use the 3955. But if you decide you need more cores, you'll get more cores, but they're going to be a little bit slower. So the 3955. Okay, I'm going to go back to the WRX80 motherboard now. Depending on other factors unknown to me by what you're doing, the two motherboards that I would pick for what you want is either the Asus on the far left or the Supermicro on the far right. And based on right now what's going on, since you can't hardly find or get your hands on a high-end processor, excuse me, a high-end desktop processor or a workstation processor, and remember, to reiterate, we're looking at a workstation processor. Okay, because we're having trouble getting our hands on processors right now, you're going to have better luck buying the Supermicro motherboard because most of those are sold with the processor already installed. And I know some people have had issues getting those working. So if you find a motherboard to do what you want, 
You're either looking at the ASUS because it'll take multiple GPUs or you're looking at the Super Micro because it'll take multiple GPUs. But based on the processor, the thing you want to go with is Super Micro. Let's take a look. And that particular motherboard, as we look at this, has the one, two, three, four, five, six slots. It's also got, you can see the location of the M.2 drives. It looks like we have four on the motherboard and there are no heat sinks, but because the location of these three, which are right below the slot, you're going to have to think about uh, what you're going to do about heat sinks, which for PCI Express 4 is going to be an issue, but they're going to have to be thin so that these cards can clear, because I imagine these cards will probably come out right about in here. I could be wrong on that, but it's something to be aware of. Okay, so we've gone through the specs for the application. We've looked at what you have, what you're doing. We've made a recommendation for what we think you need, but we've also provided you an upgrade path with what you have. To do this other requires a new build, and the question is how far you want to go with it. So I hope those two options give you something to think about. I want to thank you for asking. And more information, change one thing, can change everything. But I hope what we have shared with you is going to help give you some new opportunities to look at. And the conversation always is still going on. So I want to thank you for watching. My name is Gil Boyd. This is Builder By. We look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.